Hello everyone, welcome to a beginner's guide to IMO4. This is the fourth video in our series on indigenous microorganisms, and today we're going to show you how to integrate your IMO3 into your native soil. If you want to download our free ebook on IMO cultivation stages one through five, we have explanations of everything as well as recipe cheat sheets for IMO three and four. So if that would be helpful, please hit the link in the description to get access to that. Before we get into exactly how to make IMO four, I want to talk about why it's an important step. In my research on this, I came to wonder why I couldn't just add the IMO three directly to the soil since the microbes had diversified and expanded in volume. And the best way I can think of to describe why you need to make IMO4 is to use the image of a small town that has a new business move in. This happened not long ago in the town that we live in, a new butcher shop opened up, and I remember driving past it one day and thinking, I didn't know there was a new butcher shop in town. And every time I drove past it, I never saw anyone there except the owners. Now I'm sure that they got some business, but then a few months later, this butcher shop threw a community barbecue and they advertised that they were gonna give away free burgers and brats for anyone that wanted them. I went to the barbecue along with hundreds of people from town. And now all of a sudden this butcher shop was on the map. Everyone in town got the chance to meet the owners, see the inside of the store, exchange some goodwill, and get to know each other. Now, at the risk of sounding a little cheesy, IMO4 is kind of like that barbecue. If you were to spread IMO3 directly on your garden bed, it might take some time before any of the native microbes got to know any of the outsiders. It'd be like the butcher shop moving in without getting to know anyone in town. IMO4 is where the new microbes get to mingle with the native microbes. And then once they've gotten to know each other, they're ready to spread out across the whole garden and beyond. Maybe that makes sense, maybe not. Either way, here's how to make IMO4. All right guys, we are ready to make this pile of IMO4. We've got our IMO3 and this just finished cooling down, so we're gonna use it right away. And I'm gonna use the whole pile because we wanna spread this over our whole property. All you need for IMO4, this is a very similar process to making IMO3. You just need your finished IMO3 and then equal parts soil from your area. On top of that, I'm gonna be using some activated charcoal that will get charged up. I'm gonna be incorporating the same nutrients as I did before, I've already mixed them up. I've got the sea salt, molasses, vinegar, natural fertilizer. I still don't have any OHN, so I'm not gonna add it. I'll, before I add this to my water, I'm gonna add some humic acid. I'm gonna show you a different way that you can actually yield humic acid. If you saw our IMO3 video, I just collected worm castings leachate does directly from the worm bin. Now that totally works, but my worm bin had kind of gone anaerobic, is anaerobic right now. So I'm just kind of, I'm actually in the process of repairing it a bit, getting the castings kind of back online. I'm not really eager to use those castings because I don't want any of the funky anaerobic bacteria to mess with the more aerobic process that IMO cultivation is. So I have some finished castings from a separate thing. And these, I, I know I have really good microbial activity. I've just put a handful into a paint strainer and I've tied it up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna steep this a couple of times in my bucket of water. It's, I mean, it's a gentle steep. I'm just gonna do this for a little while until I kind of see the humic acid coming out. You can also do this with compost. You, if you wanna put a little bit more compost in a bag, both of these compost and vermicastings contain humic and fulvic acid. We're gonna make sure we do that so that we have a good food for our fungus and our fungi rather. Okay, now that I've got that, I'm gonna add in my other nutrients into my approximately four gallons of water. Now that is ready to go. This is the exact same nutrient water that we're using from IMO3 minus the IMO2 because we've got our IMO3. I'm gonna spread out this pile a little bit so that I can kind of get a better sense of the mass. And then I'm going to just pour my native soil on top of it. Actually, I'll add a little bit of charcoal. Now, obviously you can weigh your materials, but with this large of an amount, it's not super feasible for me to weigh it out. I don't have a giant 
industrial scale. And now we're gonna mix it. Okay, I think that's fairly well mixed. I'm gonna make my well in the center, just like with IMO3. You can see I can just clump it up into a ball pretty easily. It's just completely damp, but it's really not, it's not dripping at all. And this is the consistency that you want. Maybe a little bit more damp and actually add in a tiny bit more, but I think this is pretty much what you're looking for. It just holds together in your hands, but it crumbles when you toss it. Main thing is you don't want this to be oversaturated because it can go anaerobic, just like IMO3. So I think we're gonna go ahead and leave it right there. And like IMO3, we're just gonna, we're gonna make a pile with a height of no more than 18 inches, but just somewhere between a foot and 18 inches. And this is gonna do a similar thing. It's gonna heat up. We wanna make sure that it doesn't surpass 120 Fahrenheit because that'll start killing off all the diversity. I'm gonna make this just a nice kind of middle ground, maybe around 14 or 16 inches in height, just eyeballing it. And of course I'll cover it up. I'm here about 12 hours later, maybe 10 hours later, and the pile was at 120, which is okay. That's kind of what is gonna happen. I spread it out, as you can see. I just wanted to kind of spread it out quickly so that it didn't peak over 120. This is just gonna let it cool down a bit. What I noticed when I was spreading it out is that the material is quite dry. All I'm gonna do is I've gathered up some more of my water, which has all the nutrients in there. So the humic acid and sea salt and vinegar, all that. Just made another batch of that and I'm just gonna incorporate it in with the IMO4 to kind of rehydrate it a bit. We have a, we're in a very, very dry climate and it's very hot. It was up to 100 today. So it kind of makes sense that it would start to dry out. But I also may have not added enough water in the first place. Either way, that's okay because it is still heating up. It's very active, clearly. And the main thing is I just want the moisture content to kind of stay in the right zone for those first, the first, you know, five days especially. It's supposed to dry out. This early on, probably just need more moisture and it might have just taken some time to kind of soak it all in. So I'm gonna just add in my moisture. I'm gonna try and spread it out evenly. This is the last time that I'll show you flipping the pile because it's pretty much the same thing every time. So the next time I show you what it looks like, it'll be finished, but you basically wanna just monitor pile. Try your best to not get it to spike over 120. If it does for a little bit, like 30 minutes or something, that's all right. If it goes for more than 30 minutes, this is for IMO4 or IMO3, you'll still, you know, still wanna use it. Don't necessarily throw it out. You can finish the process, but it's not gonna have the microbial diversity as it would if you kind of get it in that sweet spot between 110 and 120. And you might want to play around with the height of the pile. It could be that you're piling it too high and that makes heat generate more quickly. Could be that you want to spread it out a little bit more and have it just a, a shallower height. This stuff is pretty damp, but I think it's probably in a much better place. Still, I'm not getting tons of moisture through my fingers. Maybe it just barely starting to squeeze through. So that was definitely more water. And I mean, guys, also just a side note, whenever you're making this stuff, you should definitely touch it with your hands, get it on your skin because these microbes are so incredibly healthy. We'll be back. All right, guys, this is the pile at almost exactly 36 hours later. I checked this last night when it was at the 24 hour mark and it was kind of around 113. So I took a risk, probably shouldn't have, but took a risk and let it go overnight, checked in the morning, and now we definitely need to flip it. So we don't want it to heat up any more than this. I don't think it's spiking right now, but like actively rising. 
it's probably just very gradually going up. But we're gonna give it a, a flip. So we'll cover this back up. And I'm gonna just keep an eye on this all day today because now that it's kind of in the temperature range, you know, it depends on how hot it really is, but now that it's in that sort of range, it can more easily creep up on you and spike over 120. So it's been a week and this pile has heated up. It's cooled down and stayed cool. We're down to about 95, which is pretty close to ambient temperatures right now. It's quite warm. So this is finished. I would, I'm going to say this is finished IMO4. And part of the reason that I'm pretty sure that the, the fungal development has happened is because we've got plenty of the white kind of mycelium like stuff going on. It kind of looks like spider webs or cobwebs even. And there's these clumps that when you open them, you can see all this fungal development in there. It's not like glowing, but for my first attempt, I feel pretty good about it. I feel great. So now this is at this point ready to be used as IMO5, which will be in our next video. All right, that is how you make IMO4, guys. The final step in IMO cultivation before the application process. IMO4 is best applied, IMO5, as soon as possible after it is cooled down. You don't want to wait longer than a week once it's ready. Please leave a comment if you've made it this far in your IMO journey or once you have. Uh, remember to hit the link in the description if you want the free PDF with all the recipes and processes for IMO 1 through 5. And otherwise, thanks for watching.